It is a truly staggering statistic. The Department of Justice says that more than a million people have abused the prescription drug OxyContin at least once in their lives. And it's the thirst for the pain pill that helped launch one of the most unusual drug rings this country has ever seen. So I flew to Florida to talk to the guys known as the Dukes of Oxy. drug fueled parties, gorgeous women, and boatloads of Benjamins. Life was good, parties every weekend. It sounds like the notorious lifestyle of millionaire drug lords, and it was. Except these drug lords just happened to be a couple of teenage jocks from a high school in Tampa, Florida. How do you go from being a bunch of high school wrestlers to being Florida's drug kingpins, now become known as the Dukes of Oxy? We're just young, young guys caught in a nationwide epidemic. The money was just so good, you know, making $40,000 a month, you know, it can be a little blinding and tempting. Almost overnight, classmates Doug Dodd and Lance Barabas went from living in a trailer park called The Swamp to the exclusive domain of Tampa's rich and famous. He's an 18-year-old kid, and he's living next door to the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, right on the water in Tampa Bay. And they owed it all to a national health crisis, addiction to the pharmaceutical opiate OxyContin. The plan was hatched at their local school, Hudson High, where before they were big-time drug dealers, they were just a group of very close friends and student wrestlers trying to make a name for themselves as members of the Hudson Cobras. But when they started popping pills, their lives very quickly changed. And they made a name for themselves all right, not as the Cobras, but as the Dukes of Oxy. It started when Doug and Lance stumbled upon a new way of getting high by feigning pain. The doctor we had was 80-something years old. I mean, he was frail. He was an addict himself. You could tell he was an addict. Next thing I know, I'm getting 240 rusty codons and 120 oxycontin. We talked to Lance over the phone, and he said scoring oxy was easier than being kissed on prom night. Well, it was unbelievable how easy it was. Once we realized the pills were so easy to get and the quantities were so easy and the demand was just so high that we couldn't even get enough pills there was such a demand. That's how things started going, you know. We would find people that wanted to go to the doctor and we would pay for it and then we would get their medication. Their high school drug team quickly graduated to the college ranks. With the help of an old wrestling buddy, they forged an underground network that distributed hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of pharmaceuticals to universities across state lines. At its peak, these kids were moving an average of 20,000 OxyContin a month to Tennessee, Alaska, South Carolina and New York. Their operation was unique, to say the very least. The pills were shipped in containers like this, but it was the way the Dukes of Oxy got paid that will blow you away. The money came back inside teddy bears like these, stuffed, would you believe, full of cash. Good times for the Duke boys, not so much for those on the receiving end of their operation. The countless lives destroyed by the highly addictive synthetic heroin. Knowing that I was a part of that um, isn't good. You feel guilty about that? Yeah, of course. The drug companies were complicit. The doctors were complicit. The pharmacies were complicit. This was big business. It's almost like uh, heroin was legalized in Florida. But with big business comes big problems, as the Dukes were about to learn the hard way. 